Welcome to Business and Happiness Podcast. I'm your host, Bratzo Pobridge. This episode is sponsored by Life Success Academy, a place where you recreate your business and personal happiness. So in this session, we will cover resiliency and optimism. And we will go over, you know, why optimism is one of the top resiliency factors, how to build it. And what do optimistic people really do? And why is that important for their life? So as far as optimism, one of the first things that optimistic people do is truly a good planning. And that planning really means from the time we wake up to time we go to sleep. That's a daily planning. So they will do good daily planning. They will do weekly planning. They will do monthly planning. They will do, you know, they will plan their life. They will fully plan their life, if you will. Now, will everything go to the plan? No, of course not. You know, it never does, right? But at least there is something to back us up. There is a a good planning. Uh, Usually what I do when it comes to daily planning, I separate that into two things. So I have a task, so here's a list of daily tasks. And then I have something that's, I think, even more important, and that is focus. So what am I going to focus on? And what I do is it's not today, it's what am I going to focus on tomorrow? And ideally, if this works for you, uh, I do planning at the end of my working day. So before I clean up my office, before I close the door, I do my planning for next day. I will take my notepad. I I actually do it with the pen and paper. Um, You know, we all know there's a lot of research shows that when we do write with the pen versus just type on a computer, that we wire different, uh, uh, you know, cells, if you will, in in, in our brain. So uh, it, it just works for me and doesn't really matter how you do it. But basically, you create a list of tasks. What do I really have to do tomorrow? Something will come up that you know you didn't plan for. Fine. But then you say, what is my focus tomorrow? So my focus may be to you know big picture, uh, build my sales, you know increase my coaching revenue, uh, uh, get the next client, and then oh, most of the tasks should be around the big goal sorry, around the focus. Most of the tests should be around your daily focus. This I found to be an incredible tool uh, if you follow it on a daily basis. Also, what's so important, and I hear this from a lot of clients, you know, things happen, especially uh, if you have your own business and that's really all you do. Uh, you You may not have regular meetings scheduled. So put it on your calendar, Think, book a time for yourself. And that means here's a one hour or two, I will work on a specific task that will increase my revenue, whatever the task is, or specific task that will bring me another client. But book that time, don't rely, just because you put a list of tasks, don't rely that you will be following because something will happen and I'll, you know unless you book it fully on the calendar as if you have your full-time job and somebody just booked you know six meetings a day and you are booked for six hours on the call or in the office so do the same thing for your business book a time so that you will be able you will be focused on your end goal you will do good planning with good task list and be able to complete it. Really, really important because a lot of people with their own business struggle with this. You know, you wake up, you, 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 you look at your phone, you turn your email, here's the 30 things that happen, and now you got stuck with replying to some emails and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing for your own business. I know it happens to all of us, happens to me all the time, but I'm trying, I'm doing my best to, to minimize it. So optimistic people really true do good planning. A lot of research behind it. And if you listen to anybody who has that build optimism and resiliency and build their business, 
It's about good planning. What's the next thing? Goal settings. Again, everybody talks about goal settings. You know, any, any program that you take, it's about goal settings. But, but what's really important is how do we do goal settings? A lot of people will just set the goals, but they, you know, or a lot of times rather, we'll set the goal, but we never achieve it. That's fine. It happens to all of us, right? Or we set the goal, we achieve it, but we're not happier than before. Nothing happened, right? That's okay too. But if we can set the goal and have all the tasks around that we can enjoy the journey. So it's not about the end goal. Of course it is. That's why we set the goals, right? But it's really more importantly, it's about the journey. It's about us enjoying the time while doing the tasks to accomplish our goals. That really is more important in, in, in some people's view than that achieving that goal at the end. You know, I would say, you know, both is more important. Both, both things are important because we also, we want to achieve that goal. But if we can enjoy the journey, that's the right way to get to that goal. And that's really how, you know, uh, uh, creating or setting your goals and having in mind that journey is really, really important. And then as a journey, you know, just create some tasks around that goal that will bring you happiness as well. You know, in order for you to achieve certain goal, that means you need to meet some people. You may want to, you know, have a coffee with someone, have a video call, you know, call some, whatever that means, whatever makes you happy, create, the, uh, set the goal and have a tasks around it that will bring you more happiness. It will create a great journey for yourself. The next thing, what really optimistic people, which is Brazilian people do, they are very much action oriented, uh, meaning that they just, they focus on the action. It's all about action. If, if you think about it, you know, usually people say, well, I want to do this. I want to create my business. I want to, um, you know, write a book. I want, but then what's the action? What's the first thing you're going to do toward that goal? That's my question. What's the first thing you're going to do today? Or what's the first thing you're going to do tomorrow, right? So uh, I, I had a friend, and this is a really true story. It's really, really cool. He had, um, he had the dream of buying like some amazing car We're going, without going to details. I'm not a car guy, right? And, uh, and this was in in-person workshop. And what did he do next morning? I, for years, he kept talking about this goal. But the next morning after the workshop, he went to dealership. That was my suggestion. Go there, get the brochure, see the car, right? Two years later, he bought that exact car, which I'm so, so proud of. And so it doesn't mean that, you know, he bought the car because he went to the dealership. But what it means is it triggered more actions, right? Now it triggers action after action after action. And that's really what, what resilient people do. They are, they are absolutely 100% action oriented. The next thing they do is they are realistic. Now, you know, sometimes people will say, well, you're just too optimistic, you're not realistic. As some of you know, this is where we talk about grounded optimism. It's not about don't worry, be happy. That doesn't work. I mean, it worked for me for a while, but it doesn't work for a lot of people, right? It doesn't work. I know it didn't work for my wife for years, so I kept pushing, ah, don't worry, everything will be okay. It doesn't work like that, right? It needs to be based on grounded optimism, which is that you find something similar in life that happened to you, that you were able to, to resolve the problem, very similar, that was as difficult, and you go, well, because I did this three years ago, I was able to solve the problem, but then you go, how? Well, because I did this and I did this and I did this. I, I took actions, right? I set the goals, I took actions. Because of that, I believe this time I can do it again, right? It, it, it's, it's really being realistic. That's truly, truly important for, uh, for resilience people and for, and for optimistic people. The next thing is mindful. You know, 
we talk, everybody talks about mindfulness these days, but it is so, so important for us to try to spend as much time in the present moment as we can. Now, does it mean that we cannot be mindless? No, we have to be mindless as well. Mindless are uh, when we come to the habits, right? That's, we do it mindlessly. And, uh, and we need that as well. We need things that, that we will do that does not take much energy from our brain, right? We need that as well. But, but spending more time in a nature, uh, uh, in a nature, just one of the way of being mindful. But you can be mindful right now, right? By listening to this. But you can be mindful anytime that you choose to do so. And uh, just turning a couple of minutes into mindfulness minutes, be that washing dishes, cooking, walking, driving, you know, we all have that opportunity. We don't need to pay for it. So now that we know the research shows that optimistic people are mindful, you know, and we, you know, we have so many examples, it really is, it's worthwhile to, to give it a shot and try to spend uh, more time, more mindful moments. Now, here's really interesting one. They do not worry about the past or the future. Now, people will say, what do you mean they don't worry about the future? You know, we have to like think about what's gonna happen. I didn't say they don't plan for the future, but they're not worrying about the future. That's a different story, right? The past is gone and you can't change it. The future, if you just worry, it doesn't help you at all. Little worry may help if you turn that into action. But if you worry and then turn that into, I worry, I worry, I worry, now I get depressed, now I'm sad, now I'm, that's not good. But if you turn it into action, that's good. You know, this morning I was listening, interview with CEO of Peloton, who some of you know, basically started, invented. He was, I didn't know, he was a, he was a CEO of Barnes & Noble when they started the Nook. And, and when he started the Peloton, he had 400 companies rejection. 400, not just individuals, but the companies. He spent four years just to get started and all of his money, right? But this is what we're talking about, right? This is, this is when we say um, that this person, right? That this person basically was not worried about the past. He was planning for the future. If you look at this list of good planning, goal setting, action oriented, realistic, this person had all of this, absolutely had all of this. And, uh, and the, the next thing that, uh, that, we, uh, that the optimistic people do is that they are focused on the results. That's really all they focus on. They believe in something, they believe they can do this, and they focus on the result. Will the result of the big goal of the Peloton happen overnight? He knew it's not gonna happen, right? But he was focusing on the daily results. He was focusing on meeting the investors. He, was fo he wasn't focusing, and if you look at, all, you know, most of the famous people from, you know, successful from Walt Disney to, to Oprah Winfrey. Then hundreds of rejections. I think Walt Disney had like 345 banks that rejected him, right? But they focused on that result. They believed in themselves. It was hard. And then we think, oh, they're just successful overnight. Nothing happens to overnight to none of us. None of us, right? None of these people made it overnight. They worked so hard, but they build this optimism and they build resilience which help them in a hard time when they receive that rejection. One by one, when they overcame rejection and kept moving, that was building resilience. Anytime you move on, and, and honestly, what does build resilience? <laughs> a good time, and when everything goes as planned, doesn't build resilience. The bad time, and when we keep moving, although, although we keep failing, right? That's what builds resilience. That's hard, but that's the only way to build resiliency. And, and we don't build resiliency while we're going, you know, 
somebody never really did anything and they go, well, you know, now I'm going through a hard time. Let me look at these tools. It doesn't work that way, right? This is the lifetime journey where we just, you know, building our resiliency, building the optimism so that we can uh, not only succeed in business, but truly succeed in life, truly to create that life success where we are successful, but we're also happy, right? We're happy with our friends, with our family, with, with, with the end results, with our life. You know, it doesn't mean everything always goes well because it does not, right? Because it does not. But if we can create the true life success where we, uh, where we, where we create, create a good business, have a, have a you know, good income so we can support ourselves and our family, but also enjoy our life. That's really what we should be shooting for. So, so just to briefly to go over uh, one more time these uh, uh, top, if you will, the uh, optimism factors. And the optimism is one of the top 10 resiliency factor, right? So it's something that will help us not only build optimism, but in turn build resiliency. It's that we do good planning, we do good goal settings while having that journey in mind, not just end goal. We are action oriented so that every morning when you wake up, you can ask yourself, what can I do today? One thing, one thing I can do today that will get me closer to my end goal. That will get me closer to my you know, life dream. They will get me closer to that focus. They will get me closer, right? So always ask yourself, this, this is the best question that I ask myself every morning. What's the one thing I can do, right? So the, and that turns into action. And then also be realistic. Be realistic meaning that, um, that there are things that we, most of the things we can do. It's actually interesting uh, about realistic. I, I got to share a personal story the other day. I was, uh, I was on treadmill and I was trying to create, I looked at the goal, how do I go like all the way to the right, meaning to be like one of the top, right? And then I said to myself, it's impossible. And my mind goes immediately, nothing is impossible, <laughs> right? So I guess I, I, I don't know, how, I guess I trained myself. I did say, I said loudly, it's impossible. And immediately goes, nothing is impossible. That's really true. Now, you know, am I going to fly 747 next month? No. I mean, myself, a pilot? No, that's impossible because you got to be trained. You got to have knowledge, you have the skills, you got to be younger than me if you're just starting. But, but if you just create that attitude, you know, first time when you say it's impossible, you go, no, it's not impossible. It's hard, but it's not impossible. I think that's really, really important. That, that, I mean, that helped me to entire life. And I think that's, that's really important. And then, you know, so that's realistic, uh, being mindful, trying to spend some more time in the present moment. You know, there is reason that all these devices like Fitbit and, and um, you know, Apple Watch and so on, they ask you to like breathe, right? To stay in the present moment. And they'll tell you that that will help you with the focus, which is really true. They did a lot of research. They didn't, you know, they spent millions and millions to come up with this one little thing that says breathe, <laughs> which we all know how to do, right? <laughs> but to do it correctly or to do it right, to be in the present moment, to be mindful. And not worry about the past, which is not easy. It's not easy, but honestly, realistically, if we are realistic, we know we can't change it. We know there's nothing we can do, right? So we made mistake, that's fine. And, and not worry about the future, but plan for the future. That's different. Plan for the future versus not worry, right? And also to, to focus on the end result. Always focus on the results. So that will be all for today, my friends. And I will talk to you soon. Become the Life Success Academy founding member. Go to academyoflifesuccess.com and click on founding member to get 60% off full membership.